Hey, how you doing? So a bit over a month later, and I've finally managed to code the entire program for the MIDI controller. I've been trying to think about the best way to shoot this video so that it's not incredibly boring. I didn't want to just sit here showing every part of the code, saying things like this variable here does that, and that variable here does this. So I think what I'll do first is show what the controller does and its various modes, then maybe take a brief look at the code so that we can get a general idea of what's going on. And then anyone who wants to deep dive into the code can just follow the GitHub link down in the description. Then we can begin looking at how to make a wooden housing for it all and finally finish the controller off. So what bits of hardware are a part of the controller? Well obviously we've got the keys, which is the main part, but I've also added the pitch bent wheel, which I've taken from another old MIDI controller, as well as mod depth wheel, octave up and down buttons, an encoder so we can select the different modes, an RGB LED for a bit of colour visualisation, and then an OLED screen to display all the information that's required for each mode. And you can see the word MIDI bouncing around, just as a little screensaver. And over on this side, I've got an EEPROM chip to store some data for one of the modes in the controller. But I'm I'm not sure that this will be a part of the final design. But enough about the hardware, what modes are actually in the MIDI controller? Well let's jump in and take a look. So first off, we can see the little screensaver doing its thing on the OLED screen when there was no activity from the controller for 30 seconds. But once we turn the encoder, we are presented with the main menu. Here, we can select our various modes and features by turning the encoder, making a selection by pressing the encoder, and returning to the main menu by double pressing the encoder. We can see a few modes and options here on the screen. Play, ARP, Teach, Options, MIDI Playback, and BPM Control. So let's go from the top to bottom and work our way down. The play mode is simply just being able to play the keyboard like any other controller. But we can see a few things going on whenever I press a key. First off, each keying an octave from C to B will produce a different colour on the RGB LED, giving an indication as to what note is being played. And we can also see on the OLED screen a little piano key graphic that will highlight the appropriate key whenever it's played, as well as what note it is. We can also see the octave range down the bottom, which will move the octave range of the keys up and down whenever I press the corresponding button. We can also use the pitch bend wheel to shift a note up and down in pitch. But I found that I have to be fairly slow with the movement, otherwise it creates a stair step sound as the note is shifted up or down. So I think the pitch bend wheel needs a bit of looking at still in the code. I'm also able to use the mod wheel to control the amount of vibrato on each note. And if I double press the encoder, we'll now return back to the main menu, where I can now select the ARP mode. The ARP, or arpeggio mode, works the same as the play mode, however this time, it will play the various notes of a scale either up, down, up and down, down and up, or randomly each time I press a key, as well as a heap of other options. So let's take a look at what it can do. First off, we can select the range where we're able to choose how long each note takes before it plays the next one in the scale. So we can choose between 4 bars, 2 bars, 1 bar or a whole note, a half note, quarter note, 8th note, 16th note, or 32nd note. select a 20 quarter to a 30 second note. And the range is also based on the BPM, which can be changed back in the main menu.
Next in the list, we have the length, where we can select how long the entire arpeggio runs for. One note, two notes, four notes, or eight notes. Then we have the scale, where we can select between a major or minor scale for the notes in the arpeggio. And finally the direction, where we can select which way we want the arpeggio to move. Up, down, up and down, down and up, and random. We can also see the RGB LED will change from one colour to another for each key pressed. I've also worked out that I can do a few things in the art mode that I never actually intended to be a feature in the first place. If I set the length to one note, and the direction to up, and then hold down multiple keys, it will play whatever notes are selected, meaning I can make my own custom arpeggio patterns. And if I now change the range and the direction both to random, and then hold down a single key, I'm now able to create my own generative music. Going back to the main menu, we can now select the next mode for the controller, the scale teacher. For the people who don't know, I was a guitar player before I started making the synth, so I actually have no idea how to play scales when it comes to a piano. So to combat this, I decided to try and program my own piano teacher into the controller. First off, we have our menu where we can select what scale we want to practice and how many notes to be played. Once these options are chosen, we can then press begin and we're presented with a piano key graphic again. But this time, it will display each note that is in the chosen scale. Now we're able to begin playing the notes of our chosen scale to practice. As we play the notes, the piano graphic will again highlight which key is being pressed. For the RGB LED, we'll also change colours depending on how well the scale is being played. The program keeps count of how many correct and incorrect keys are pressed. If the number of correct keys pressed is more than the incorrect keys pressed, then the LED will glow green. The LED will glow red if the number of incorrect keys pressed is more than the correct keys pressed, and then glow yellow if they're equal. Once we finish playing all the notes we selected to practice, the OLED screen will then change and display some info about the practice session, such as the percentage of correct and incorrect notes pressed, as well as a little message like well done if you played well, or you need more practice if you haven't played well. After this, we can then double press the encoder and go back to the main menu. I need to swap the order of this menu item with the MIDI playback function, but nonetheless, in here, we have a few global options for the controller, such as enabling an inverse display mode if I'm using the controller outside or under bright lights. Then we can also select if we want the screensaver on or off. So far, that's the only global options in this menu, but some more might come along if I add any more features. Going back to the main menu, we can now select the MIDI playback mode. If you're like me, 
and grew up playing guitar in the 2000s and 2010s, then you've probably encountered the program Guitar Pro at some point. The tablature slash notation editing software where you can play the music of songs with pretty janky sounding mini instruments and learn how to play it at the same time. In Guitar Pro, you can actually export the whole song as a MIDI file to be played back in VLC Media Player or what have you. So I had the idea of trying to find a way to play a MIDI file on the modular synth. Mostly because I would love to set it up in a front window at Christmas time to play some spacey Christmas carols for the neighbours and light lockers. After doing a shit ton of googling, I ended up coming across a MATLAB script where it will read a MIDI file and then extract all of the relevant MIDI commands, such as the note on and off events, program and control changes, and the timestamp at which those events take place. I modified the MATLAB code a little so that I could extract all of the relevant MIDI commands and the timestamps at which they take place, and then do a bit of mucking about in Excel to get it in the right format for the Arduino. I really want to be able to say at this point I was able to work out how to get the program to play the song back, but I honestly struggled with this for a few days before finally caving and looking on the Synth DIY Facebook page for a bit of help. So I have to give all credit to Tim Nijs... Nijsen... Nijsen... I don't know how to say it, I'm sorry. For helping me work out this feature, because it's bloody ripper. But anyway, from here, we get the program to keep track of the current time, and then based upon the current time, send out the relevant commands over MIDI, so that it will play the song back over the synth. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. So now all I have to do is find a song I like, download the guitar profile, export the MIDI file, extract all the relevant MIDI commands in MATLAB, get them into a data structure for the Arduino, and then have the program spit out the commands. Okay, so it's a bit of work involved, but it's worth it in my opinion. And this is also what I had the EEPROM chip here for. I was trying to find a way to store all the MIDI data for a song inside it, rather than the onboard memory for the Arduino. But it turned out to be way more work than I anticipated. So now I'm starting to think, I might actually drop the MIDI playback function from the controller, and instead make it into a separate module further down the line. Then I can incorporate a sequencer into the module as well, since the playback function is basically the same thing. Okay, so with all that being said, what can we actually do with the MIDI playback function? Well, let's jump in and take a look. In the menu, we're able to adjust a number of things to change how the song sounds while it's played back. The first option is to select which song is to be played. But since the program just has the one at the moment, this option is pretty superfluous. Next in the list, we can select the octave range, allowing us to shift the entire song up or down by three octaves, or just keep it to the original. Next, we're able to adjust the BPM range of the song to make it play faster or slower by a certain percentage. After that, we're also able to adjust the transposition of a song where we can shift the notes up and down by almost a full octave, allowing it to basically be played in a completely different key. Of course, we can also mix and match all the different options to really mess around with the song being played back. And that brings us to the end of the controller demo. I'm still sitting on a few other features, such as extra pots to control different CVs on the modular, much like how you can assign a pot to something in your door. However, this would require finding a quad DAC 
we're not making video to CV converter. And they seem to be in very short supply at the moment. Hell, even the dual ones seem pretty rare at the moment. Alright, so let's take a quick look at the code. As I said at the start, I'm not going to bore you for hours with what every single part of the code does, but just give a general idea of how it all works together. Past all the global variables in the setup, We reach the loop part of the code where we only have a few statements. Current time is set to the millisecond timer, allowing the variable to constantly keep track of the time since the program began for the playback mode. We then call a few other functions. Menu adjust, where we read the status of the encoder and the other hardware to select between all the different options in the controller. Then we come down to static menu, where the OLED screen is updated based upon the encoder selection. A clear display command so that the screen is updated on every pass of the loop. RGB LED, where we update the desired color of the LED. Then finally MIDI control, where we send out the required MIDI commands for the synth. And then I've got some other stuff here where I was experimenting with the BPM clock. But the program basically just cycles through each of these functions and then updates everything accordingly. And that's all I'm going to leave the code demo at. As I said, if you want to take a deeper dive into the code, you can just follow the GitHub link down in the description. If anyone spots something that needs attention or could be improved, please let me know, because I know that there's got to be some pretty dodgy code inside here. I know I said at the beginning of the video, we can start to look at how to make the wooden housing for the controller, but I think I might leave that for the next video, as this one's getting pretty long as it is. So with that being said, until next time, I'll see you later.